Hey y'all, welcome back. Well, today's video is going to be one that was requested. There has been several people on, on our social media sites and people around here local and different things that have asked about our grunt calls or what grunt calls I use. And uh, so today we're going to get to what is my favorite grunt calls of all time and the ones I use in the videos you're fixing to see of the deer we've called in from well over 400 yards. So y'all stay tuned. So I'll jump right into it. I actually have two. Now this is a bad time of year for me to be putting this on. Deer season just ended in Tennessee. But the reason I didn't get this video on uh, during season and during the rut was because when I was at LBL, I lost my call that I'd had over well over 10, 12 years. I use two different calls. So my number one call that I use is the Primo's Buck Roar. It's the original that they come out with. Uh, I, had done, I had a lot of calls before that got, when you blew on them real hard or tried to call with them, they got ducky. So just a quacking sound. And far off, you couldn't blow real hard at a long distance to get a buck's attention and sound like a buck or even have the range to do it. So when they come out with the Primo, Primo's Buck Roar, this one has a huge vocal chamber in it. No matter how hard you blow on it, it won't get ducky. So this is a very simple call. It has a snort wheeze on top. It has a single hole snort wheeze, the original one does. And it's got, you can pull the chamber out and you can see the reed. Now on the reed, I'll show, I'll put it up where you can see a little closer. But there is a estrus bleat, doe bleat setting. Uh, doe grunt, young deer, mature buck, and tending grunt. And there is a, you make sure the reed is the same length and you can roll this o-ring, this rubber o-ring to whatever position you want it. Now that o-ring of course will tighten that reed up to where it won't be as loud. But I have had success on mature buck, but tendon buck is is the one that's been the most successful for me in the last 10 years so basically you check what read you want make sure it's all good and clean and you put it back just slide it back in the chamber and you're ready to go now the original buck roar come with a compass my other one the compass finally come off i actually ordered this one on ebay and it was uh it was not in original package but it did have the original wrist strap and everything so it's pretty cool it's kind of nostalgic to get it because they've updated the buck roar. This is my number one go-to call. I'm going to show you how to use it first, and we'll show you what I went to to use the rest of the season before I got me another one of these. So, in the scenario, and you'll see in some of the videos I'm fixing to show, the first clip I'll show you kind of me calling in the woods. And what I always try to do is when I'm blind calling, and I know there's nothing around me, or I'm trying to reach a longer distance, I won't blow on it as hard. So this is basically what I do. I always move left to right or right to left. I'll cut my hand over the end where I can open it. And I'll start over one shoulder, just like a buck that is, you know, on the prowl, grunting, chasing, or looking for a doe, or he's picked up the scent. So this is basically what I do. Now, if there is a buck that I can see, you know, from a long distance, this is the call I'll use to call to him. And what I'll do, I'll do that grunt in the opposite direction. I'll try to do it with as least movement as I can. If he's up to my left, I would go kind of towards him, but not directly at him and just see if that spikes his attention. Now, what you will see, and you'll see in some of these videos I'm going to show, after I grunt, you'll see them start making a scrape or brushing a tree. It kind of gets them bristled up. But the one that has always worked for me, and I'll show you several different videos, that when they're more than 200 yards away or whatever, and you've really got to get loud, you got to think as loud as you're calling, 
you're not, you're just barely getting a sound to him. But the roar is the ticket. So this is a roar. This is what a bucket, when he's frustrated, he's aggravated. Some people call it crunt, a grunt or croaking, but this is a buck roar. You don't want to do that a lot of times in a row, but as long as it's enough to get his attention. Now, I learned something new this past season. I had I had seen it once before on the Deer Society. They had a buck they called Croker, and it was like a nine-year-old buck. But this year, I actually got to put catch it on film, and I'll put the link to the description of this video right up here. Well, here or here, whichever side. And he actually croaked three times a long tendon grunt. And I used that grunt on another clip I'll show you of a deer that I called in for service. She missed, and my dad was in range enough across the power line that he was able to shoot him. But I did work him from 400 plus yards across the fence on our property. So this is the croak. <laughs> Here is the video clip of what happened with that. That's a good look. Do you look?
Now that you've seen that, um, those videos, you can tell that that one buck was actually, I grunted him up there in 2021, and Sarah decided not to shoot. I'm sorry, in 2020. In 2021, I actually, the same identical buck, just got a little bit heavier horn. He was a short time wide buck, but he was three and a half, maybe four and a half. I didn't age him. I have his jawbone. Um, Actually, it's still on the skull. I'm going to be boiling him for my dad. But um, but anyway, that buck I got in two years in a row. So uh, that is, uh, that's pretty cool, and I did it with the buck roar. Now, when I lost my buck roar, I actually ran to Walmart and got the new version. Now, the new version of the Primo's buck roar, and I am not sponsored by any of these calls I'm showing you. So this is just a backup call for the original buck roar it basically has the exact same setup the o-ring goes up and down the reed it has the same settings as the original buck roar the tube is actually basically the same diameter maybe a little bit wider than the original buck roar and of course as soon as i got it i moved it to tendon buck and got it ready now the only different characteristics in this is the snort wheeze sounds a little better and it actually has two holes in it so the original buck roar sounds something like this the snort wheeze on this one sounds a little more realistic probably can't tell it much in the camera but it has more of a nostril blowing sound but that this grunt call performed almost identical. It's just hard for me to get away from the original buck roar. But I, you will see here it sounds a lot like the original buck roar. <coughs> then the roar. <coughs> and then the croak. These calls are long range calls, but can be on on ten and buck. They just about got to be a long range call, at least a hundred yards or better. But it will get their attention. So this is my number one. This is my backup if I was not if I didn't have this. But my my other go to grunt call. I don't have much video using this. But this is another. This is a grunt call that doesn't get ducky, and it is adjustable. It's I believe the Deer Society make it. It's an extinguisher deer call. It's got a very lifelike, esophagus look. You know the. It, it's got the same tube as what a buck's throat would be if he's making that grunting noise, and it has three settings on it. It has fawn, doe, and buck, and which you could use this during bow season, muzzler season, whatever you want to use for what time of year it is uh, when you're starting to get that first little bit of pre-red activity. But this is what this call sounds like on fawn. And you barely blow on it, it makes the sound you want. Now if you slide it down to doe, just where it lines up with the, I'll put a picture right here so you can see what the slide looks like. But when you put it on doe, it would be the same as a doe grunt or a young young buck grunt. <coughs> now, where I always run mine though is on buck, and I'll put a lanyard back on this green one, and I'll have two of these around my neck, or this will be shoved down in my vest. But this is what the buck sounds like. 
You can't really roar with it. You can, but it's this call is really to me is more for a buck. Not, not a windy day, one of bluebird perfect mornings to where you just need to get his attention or he's going by and he's stopped. That's where these on leaves and stuff, you can overpower the sound of them running and their leaves if they're chasing, their feet hitting the ground or rough on the leaves, you can overpower with these. But this makes a really good grunt. <laughs> Now, all I'm doing is getting a hold of that call, closing my hand to start with, just like a deer with its mouth closed as it goes to open the grunt. And I open my hand gradually. Now, I have never tried croaking with this. It did work for Deer Society in their croaker video. Their croaker video. So we'll see about a, a roar and a croak. So this would be a roar. And this would be more of a tending, croaking sound. Now, all of these calls being shown to you and how I do it, this is how I personally do it. And it's been quite successful for me. I've got several good bucks and I've brought a lot of mature bucks in that, um, and even some younger bucks. I. It, these are really good calls. I only show what I feel like works for me. The same way with the SB Woodenwell Bed Winch. I tried one before I ever did the video on it. Then I did the install and then I did the video on showing it. There's just, there is Deer Lick Ridge um, turkey calls. I really like their turkey calls. So I don't push these. I'm not sponsored. I don't get money off of these. Uh, hopefully one day maybe I will, but I don't as of right now. But one thing I would say is when you're using one of the bigger calls, if you decide to buy these, and I'll put a link uh, to the only probably link or description I could get probably on Amazon will be for the Buck Roar 2. It is really close to the Buck Roar 1. It's actually a little more compact. And who knows, I might end up liking this better, but I'll put a link to this in the description below. And I'll also put a link to a camouflage and a black one of these. It's just according to your your preference of what you would want. This one here is in real tree. Um, but the black looks really good too. My wife actually has a black one. Uh, my, my daughter Sarah has one. And most of the Pine Life crew have these. Daddy O's got one of the buck roars. He also has an extinguisher. He don't use them much, but he has them. Now, Harley and Hunter, I believe, both have uh, buck roars, and Hayden might even have one too, but I'm not sure. But one thing I would point out, don't ever call to a buck if he's within 50 yards looking at you because I have i don't know how true it is, but I've read it and I've heard it on videos and different things to where a buck can pinpoint a grunt within two to three yards of where it comes from. So you definitely don't want to give him a reason the cone of vision is going to be more to the ground if you're up in a tree. If you're on the ground, you really don't need to call to him if he's within 50 yards. Especially with a muzzler, you don't. It wouldn't matter. But with a bow, you got to be very careful about when you pick and choose because it's a chess game. I mean, it's a cat and mouse. It's Gordon if he sees you or not. So if a buck, my rule is if I think he's within 50 yards, I do not grunt at him, especially if I got his attention. His curiosity alone will bring it in. Now, you use these with a decoy as long as he's got his eyes on that decoy you could probably cheat with a, one of the ones that are a little bit quieter these are too loud unless you move the reed down and you can do it on the fly while you're in the tree if you can stay concealed enough but i hope this answers some of the questions that i've got on social media the people i've met at trade shows and different ones that watch our videos I hope this, this is exactly how I do it. If you go back and watch these videos that I've done and you see how I use them, how I cut my hands, that is how I've been successful. So my number one long range call would be the Buck Roar original or the Buck Roar 2. My within 100 yards call are hardwoods and thicket hunting, real close to hardwoods or thickets. Uh, you can't hardly go wrong with the extinguisher. So I'll put a link to these in the description below. I've tagged a few videos through here. Uh, please leave me a comment in the uh, comment section. 
It, tell me what kind you use, if you use these, if you've had success, and if there's something else that we've done in one of the videos that you would like to do, please request it. I'll get around to it as soon as I can. I'm going to go ahead and release this video. Just remember to come back to it next deer season, and uh, I'll try to uh, post it more on social media, the link when it gets close to the rut time here in Tennessee, which is usually... Uh, late October, November, and then we usually have a second round of rut or estrus in December. Some people say we have three or four in Tennessee. I don't know, but the major rut is usually around our muzzleloader season into rifle. It's just according to what area and when the does come into estrus. So I hope this helped. Uh, this will be another one I add to the deer gear, uh, the the deer hunting gear or gear playlist. So y'all check it out. Remember it next year. And we want to thank y'all for all the support that you've done for us. We'll see y'all next video. And as always, God bless.